when someone tells you to be a man they mean that there is a way to be a man a man is not just a thing to be it is also a way to be a path to follow and a path to walk when someone tells a man to be a man they mean to be like the men whom our society holds in high regard men want women to want them but female approval isn't the only thing men care about when men compete against each other for status they are competing for each other's approval the women whom men find most desirable have historically been attracted to or been claimed by men who were respected by other men masculinity is about what men want from each other the path of masculinity seems confusing it is only because there are so many groups of men who want so many different things from men established men of wealth and power have always wanted to believe that being a man was about duty and obedience men of religion and ideology have always wanted men to believe that being a man was a spiritual or moral endeavor and manhood could be proved through means of self mastery and self sacrifice men who have something to sell always have wanted men to believe that masculinity can be proved or improved by buying it some researchers say that people can only form meaningful brotherhood with around 150 people that's the size of a military company the group of 2 to 15 men is a comfort zone it's an effective team size for tactical maneuvers but it's also socially manageable you can really know about how many guys at one time about only that many guys at one time you can maintain a good working relationship and a meaningful social history with 100 or so more beyond those numbers connections become extremely superficial trust breaks down and more rules and a cook code of conduct always enforced by threat of violence are required to keep men together as long as men within a group maintain separate identities there's always a chance that they will choose to put the interests of their own ahead of their leader's interests in hard times agreements between groups fall apart men respond to and admire the qualities that make men useful and dependable in an emergency all of us should be asking ourselves in order to protect your organization from disasters what do you need from men in your group what kind of men do you need with yourself you will need men who are courageous competent productive and you will need men to commit to achieving the organization's goals and objectives you need to be able to count on them in times of crisis men who don't care about what the other men think of them are not dependable or trustworthy If you are smart you will want the other men to prove that they are committed to the team you will want them to show that they care about their reputation within the organization and also the organization's reputation among other organizations strength courage and honor these are the practical virtues of men who rely on one another in a bad situation these are the virtues that men need to protect their interests but also the virtues of the defender and the attacker there are also the these are also the virtues that a leaders must demand that leaders must demand of their people if they are going to win strength courage and honor are the alpha virtues of men all over the world they are the fundamental virtues of great leaders if people want to remove them from their life the human civilization would collapse the people who are strong courageous and loyal will always be respected and honored as valuable members of an organization the survival of an organization depends on whether they are willing to punch back against other organizations or to protect their to protect their own interests sports and games that men play provide an important role to bond them together a man's reputation may keep men in his group from going against him an organization's reputation may make its enemies think twice before ch- challenging or creating am- animo- animosity strength has always had an ancient role so that our ancestors could survive it was also needed to protect their kingdoms against aggressive power structures this is why strength was a virtue in historic times as it had value to ensure survival old people find it hard to live their lives in comfort because of the loss of strength in modern times strength can mean the ability to survive in the marketplace this comes with the ability ability to stand against outside pressure strength must be 
Strength must be put to use to be of any value. A sports car that is never driven on the road is just a pretty hunk of metal. The experience of being a male is the experience of having greater strength and strength must be exercised and demonstrated to be of any worth. When men will not or cannot exercise strength or put it to use, strength is decorative and worthless. Strength is a straightforward physical concept. Strength is the ability to move against external forces. Courage initiates movement or action. Courage is measured against danger. Men who are forced to fight than those who fight out of their own free will. Brave men fight for honor's sake, but passion aids them. In, a, in military context, courage means to defend the homeland or aggressive conduct in battle. In non-military situations, courage means the capacity to face and endure difficulties and challenges. The strength of a man is not merely a tool to be used in the service of others. Men also use strength to advance their own interests and it is foolish to expect them to make endless sacrifices without personal gain of some kind. We should expect men to fight for themselves, to compete with one another and to look after their own interests. Nothing could be more natural than a man who wants to triumph and prosper. The minimum what you have to do to move from dependence to interdependence is competence and self-sufficiency. Becoming interdependent means mastering the skills needed for leadership in your area of work. To truly be educated means to master a set of skills and acquire knowledge to be able to carry your own weight within the organization. Leadership is a man's ability to develop and expertise in techniques that aid in exertion or will over himself, over nature, over women and over other men. A culture has honor if instead of being a good man, people are good at being a man. The person who, rem who does more is worth more. In a society, the ruling authorities have always decided what work is honorable and what gets to be considered dishonorable. The honor codes have changed with time because of changing circumstances. For example, at a time when kings ruled the lands, being a warrior was considered honorable, but in a democracy, making money through legal means is considered more honorable than being a warrior. Men of wealth and influence are given more respect than men of battle skills. Successful people talk about taking risk in life because risk behaviors provide social proof of strength and fearlessness. In a survival situation in an organization, for a leader, it is tactically advantageous to maintain a reputation of being strong, courageous and masterful. A leader who doesn't care for his reputation makes his team look weak. Dishonor is dangerous for an organization because the appearance of weakness invites attack. The pe people on a lookout for th there are people who look out for weak power structures to gain an advantage by exploiting a weak team for resource resource advantages, especially manpower or human resource. Honor as a virtue means to care about what other men think of you, trying to earn their esteem and asserting yourself as best as you can to be admired as a leader within the group. A dishonorable leader presents tactical problems for the group by outwardly rejecting the core masculine values like strength and courage, advertises weakness which the competitors will definitely take an advantage of. Dishonor is disloyalty. A man who rejects the core values of masculinity in an organization is a weak link and public displays of weakness and cowardice invite attack. Men usually believe that they are right and their enemies are wrong to separate us from them. Men find moral fault in their enemies and create codes of conduct to distinguish themselves as good men. Men want to see themselves as good men fighting for something greater than survival or gain. There, there is ancient wisdom of our ancestors about being a man. These are A real man would never hit a woman. A real man takes responsibility for his actions. A real man pays his debts. A real man behaves in, believes in the eternal creator and acts according to his desires. A man who is more concerned with being a good man than being good at being a man makes a well-behaved slave.